Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In this video, I'm going to work out 16 practice test questions that should closely mirror what you should expect to see in the electronics information subtest of both the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, as well as the PICAT. Of course, on the actual test, you'll have eight minutes to answer 16 questions. So in other words, you have to move fairly quickly through these questions. And in order to get to the most from this video, you'll want to pause the video after I read a practice test question, attempt to solve it on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. As you'll see in just a minute, many of these questions are common sense. In other words, you do not need a background in electronics to answer them. And for that reason, I do not recommend that you waste any money or time on tutoring or online boot camps. I'll put a link to my playlist on electronics information in the description of this video. In my opinion, if you go through this playlist, including my other practice test, you'll be more than ready for this subtest of the ASVAB. The tutors who are offering online uh, boot camps that are usually subs uh, cost a monthly subscription are doing you a disservice. Truth be told, if you study diligently from anywhere from a week to three weeks, you should be more than prepared to do well on this test. And with all that finally being said, let's go ahead and get started with these practice test questions. This first question says, which of the following allows the telecommunications industry to transmit the greatest volume of data at the fastest speed? So right off the bat, you should be able to narrow this down between copper and optical fiber. Here's a chart that compares the two. Uh, as you can see, fiber optics or optical fiber has a lot more bandwidth and a lot more range. So to answer this one, it's gonna be B, optical fiber. Compared to optical fiber, copper wire is considered somewhat archaic. All right, so this one is B. Number two says, what is shown here? So for the ASVAB and PICAT, you do have to know some very basic electronic circuit symbols. And if you look at this chart here, you'd be able to say that this is a A resistor. And take a look at this chart. You should know the basics. Most of the basics are here. So for example, uh, you should know that this is what a capacitor looks like. You should know that this is what a battery looks like. This is what a transformer looks like and so on and so forth. All right, so that is that one. Number three says the phrase open circuit means. So let's go through these answer choices and see if we can figure this out. It definitely does not mean fully charged. And down here, I have a chart of an open circuit and a closed circuit. As you can see, in this closed circuit, electricity can flow through this switch to the light and back to the battery. So in a closed circuit, current can flow freely. So that's not correct. What about disconnected or loose wires? Well, wires can be loose and still be connected. So that's not the most accurate meaning of this phrase. If we look at an, an example of a simple circuit that's open, you can see that this switch is open, which means that, in other words, it's disconnected. So the most accurate answer to this one is B, disconnected. Number four says, in a closed circuit, when a short power cord is replaced with a long power cord, which of the following increases? The voltage does not increase. Insulation, that doesn't even make sense. Connectivity doesn't make sense. So the only logical answer choice to this one is C, resistance. Number five says, a switch starts or stops the flow of electric current in a circuit by means of. So here's a simple uh, circuit uh, where we have a lamp over here and a switch over here. You can see that the contacts in the switch are responsible for either starting or stopping the flow of electrical current. So this one is going to be B, contacts. Number six says the multiple positions on a wire stripper are required for. So here is a wire stripper. Over here, you can see this phrase AWG. What do you think AWG stands for? It stands for American Wire Gauge. It's the various gauge wires that you would use these wire strippers for. So this one is A, various wire gauges. Again, remember AWG, American wire gauge. That's the thickness of the wire. Number seven says, which part of a television is the output device? So here's an example of an old CRT TV. 
Uh, at the back of the TV, there's an electron gun that shoots electrons at the screen, uh, and the screen outputs what we see as an image. So this one is going to be D screen. Number eight says, in the circuit shown in the illustration, the battery illuminates the lamp and sounds a horn. Opening switch to will. So to answer this one, you first have to know that electricity flows from positive to negative. Here's the positive side of the battery. So we have electricity flowing this way. And again, we're assuming switch one is closed. So it's going to go this way as well as this way. It's going to turn on the lamp. And go back to the negative side of the battery here. Now, if switch two here is open, so this opens up. Elect uh, electricity cannot flow to the horn. So again, if switch one is closed and switch two is open, like the question said, only the lamp is going to light up and the horn is no longer going to work. So this one is going to be uh, silence the horn and leave the lamp on C. Number nine says when an outlet is grounded, it is connected to. So what does it mean for something to be grounded? Let's talk about that for a second. So grounding is used to protect things from being damaged by electricity, and it's done by literally giving electricity a safe path to the ground. So this one is going to be D. Again, grounding protects uh, things from being damaged by electricity by giving electricity a safe path to the ground. So this one is D. Number 10 says a computer's microprocessor is actually A. Again, this one is just an integrated circuit. Uh, most of you know that one. Number 11 says which of the following components is found in a simple electromagnet so here's an example of a very simple electromagnet. You have a battery. From that battery, you have a wire that is coiled around an iron nail. So in order to have an electromagnet, you need A, a coil of wire. Number 12 says, which of these is an example of an electrostatic discharge? Uh, this one is going to be A, lightning, a lightning bolt striking a tall building. Again, when a battery stops producing electricity, that's not a, an electrostatic discharge. An outdoor porch light is turned off. Again, that's just a switch being turned off. And a match struck against a rock. Well, this is an example of a chemical reaction, not an electrostatic discharge. So the correct answer to this one is A. Number 13 says, when someone says an appliance is hardwired, it usually means the appliance is. So Hardwired appliances are appliances that are permanently connected to a home's electrical system without a plug. And here's a picture of an oven, the backside of an oven, being hardwired into the home's wiring system. So again, this one says plugged. Cross it out, plugged, cross it out, plugged into a surge protector. Again, that's a plug. So this one is going to be wired directly into the house wiring. This electronics information practice test question for the ASVAP and PICAT says this, if the resistance is 100 ohms and the current is 0.1 amps in this circuit diagram, then the voltage is. So to answer this one, you have to know ohms' law. You can see that down here. It's V for voltage is equal to I, that's current measured in amps, times R, that's resistance, which is measured in ohms. Thankfully enough, we have all these values. Uh, we know the current is 0.1 one amps times uh, resistance, which is 100 ohms. So to answer this one, all you have to do is 0.1 times 100. You can't do that mentally. Do it off to the side. You really don't want to make any mistakes on test day. So 100 times 0.1. Again, move this decimal one place to the right to make this 100 times 1, albeit with one decimal to move back into the left. 100 times 1 is 100. Move that one decimal back in. You can see that the voltage is going to be B10 volts.
ASVAB Piquet Electronics Information Practice Test question says, what is the total current in the circuit? So to answer this one, you have to understand that we're looking at a circuit that is in series. Uh, in addition, we have to know Ohm's law, which says voltage is equal to current I times R, which is resistance. This symbol here, here, and here are resistors. This is 15 ohms of resistance. This is 5 ohms of resistance. And this is 20 ohms of resistance. Uh, 20 and 20 is 40. So our total resistance is 40. We can see that we have a 120 volt circuit. So all we have to do is solve for I. This becomes 120 equals I times 40. If we divide both sides by uh, 40, we could get I current by itself. These zeros cross out. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So there is B3 amps of current. For this ASVAB Piquet Electronics Information Practice Test question, we're trying to calculate the total resistance in a parallel circuit. So we're going to use Ohm's law, specifically this formula. Thankfully enough, we know all these values. Uh, we know R1 is 50, so plug that in accordingly. Likewise, we know R2 is also 50. Let's go ahead and work this out by simplifying it. And I'm going to do that up here. What is 1 over 50 plus 1 over 50? Well, you keep the denominator the same. Then you add your numerators. 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is 1 divided by 2 over 50. We're going to follow the algorithm keep change flip. We're going to keep 1 the same, but I'm going to place it over 1 to write it as a fraction. We're going to change from division to multiplication. Then we're going to flip this bottom fraction to be 50 over 2. All right, now we just multiply straight across. When we multiply fractions, 50 times 1 is 50. 1 times 2 is 2. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So the total resistance is A, 25 ohms. This has Fab Piquet Electronics Information Practice Test question says, what is the total resistance in the circuit? If you look at our circuit here, you can see that we have resistors that are in series as well as parallel. The first thing we have to do is calculate the total resistance of these two resistors that are in parallel with each other. And to do that, we're going to use this formula here. 1 over RT is going to be equal to 1 over R1. We're going to let R1 be 150 ohms, so that's 1 over 150, plus 1 over 100. All right, so all we have to do is simplify this. We're adding two fractions. To add fractions, they have to have a common denominator. 150 and 100 both go into 300 evenly. So we're going to rewrite these with a denominator of 300. To write 150 as 300, we have to multiply it by 2. We're also going to do that to its numerator. So this is 2 over 300. We're going to, to write 100 as 300. We have to multiply it by 3. So this is 3 over 300. This becomes 5 over 300. Again, uh, total resistance is 1 over RT. So this is going to be equal to 300 over 5, which is 60. So the total resistance of these two resistors that are in parallel is 60 ohms. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and calculate the total resistance in the circuit. Uh, this circuit and this circuit are in series, and now we know that the total resistance of these two resistors that are in parallel are 60 ohms, so we can actually use this formula now to calculate total resistance. RT is going to be equal to 85 ohms plus 60 ohms, which we just calculated plus 175 ohms. I'm not going to do that math in this video. You should be able to do that mentally. That's going to be a total resistance of C, 320 ohms.